This is a prototype hat and it, the design itself depends on being able to join this section on the side of the hat neatly together at the beginning and end point. And with grafting you can do this. So I'd just like to give you a quick demonstration. Here's a completed hat brim. It was started here with a maroon coloured waist yarn. That's just a flap of stocking stitch for the appropriate number of stitches that were supposed to be cast on. I've worked in county yarn which gently shades all the way around the brim of the hat until the hat brim is long enough to fit the future wearer. At the end of the hat brim, instead of working the last row in pattern, I've changed the waist yarn and worked that row exactly as it should have been in pattern but using the waist yarn. Then I followed it by four or five rows of waist yarn stitches. The waist yarn flaps will allow me to fold it into position and hold my stitches in such a fashion that I can see where to graft my stitches. This is the start of my brim. This is the finish of my brim. I've changed to using a blue waist yarn at the end because the dark red would be rather similar to the maroon, but ideally your waist yarns should be the same colour, just to avoid confusion. So we've got to graft the yellow stitches to the red ones. I've cut my working yarn off with enough yarn to stitch the missing row, so I've cut it with four times the width of the row uh, left, left attached to the work. Now I'm going to follow the waist yarn stitches and join these two pieces of knitting together, virtually invisibly, apart from the colour change. The first stitch I need to join is the first stitch of the I-cord up the side here. So I'm going to go in where my waist yarn went in, up the side of the stitch, and pull my working yarn through. Then I'm going to go around the base of the great great grandparent stitch where it wants to be a V, it wants to come together there. It's also exactly where it's held by the waist yarn. The waist yarn pr provides a perfect guide to your sewing stitches. So I sew it around there, pull it to about the same size and shape as a regular stitch and go back where the waist yarn went again, back into the same stitch. back around the base of stitch 2. Now as I'm stitching around in a circle I would be well advised to cut away the waist yarn as I go otherwise this will get bedded in and you won't be able to pull it out very easily. So I'm going to undo the waist yarn at the same time as I make the stitches. So stitch 2, pull out the waist yarn Go back to where I came from, so back up there, into stitch 3, roll it over so I can see what's coming next, and I'm going to cut away my top waist yarn as well. Round the base of stitch 3, Pull out the waist yarn. The first time you do this, work on fairly large yarn so you can see what's going on. Back into stitch three and along to stitch four, around the base of stitch four, and back in to the side of the fourth I cord stitch. The eye cord looks just fine. Now I'm going to cut away the, eye, the waist yarn from inside and then we'll start to graft the garter stitch. I've cut away the waist yarns where they were attached to the eye cord stitches. I've adjusted the size and shape of the eye cord stitches so it all looks nice and neat. There's one more stitch there that I can pick away because it's already been copied. Now these two bits of waist yarn carry on working for us. We tuck them through and get them out of the way and now we can copy, copy the path of the yarn. That was the last bit of I-cord there. 
Now, as the yarn exited this stitch, we follow the blue waist yarn, and the blue waist yarn comes up from the back, up to the front, and we'll copy it. There's no need to cut away the waist yarn anymore. Now I go to the other side. This maroon stitch goes up and over, so I'll copy it. Now it's easier if I turn this on the vertical. I come back to the blue side. The piece of blue yarn goes in there and up to the next stitch. So this is an example of a perfect graft. We're going to be grafting it in garter stitch and there shouldn't be any noticeable interruption to the pattern. I've stitched right across now and if you look very carefully you can see how my red stitches exactly match the waist yarn. There are twin stitches where I've been sewing and it'll be the same on the blue side. So I'm just entering the last stitch of the garter stitch section so that's where the blue yarn goes and if I just let it guide me up into the knit stitch I'm now back into the I cord. So I, I'm up side of that first stitch in the I cord and here things have become a little loose so I'm just going to tighten up my waist yarn. There we are. And now I can see my first stitch of the I cord up top. Whenever you graft a stitch you graft it round where it wants to be a V, where it wants its legs held together. And I'll repeat this just the same as I did on the first I-cord edge. And you always try to get the new stitches to the same size and shape as the ones of a regular... same size and shape as a regular row of stitches. And whilst I'm doing this I should be cutting away the waist yarn from underneath otherwise I won't be able to get at it. I've finished stitching around the eye cord, I've neatened up the stitches and I've cut away the waist yarn from underneath. These flaps are still attached at the moment and now these can be removed. I could technically unpick this from the bound off edge but since I've already cut both ends it's just as quick to uh, take it from the sides and pull it away. So everything's looking good. Now I'm going to remove the second side. Ideally you should use a smooth yarn for your waist yarn rather than a fluffy one. Uh, it will come out more easily but it should be brightly contrasting and the same weight as your working yarn. So the waist yarn is gone. Let's look at the resulting join. If it weren't for the subtle colour change you'd be hard pushed to tell that there was a join there. It's a perfect graft because we've grafted the bases of stitches to the to the tops of their great 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 grandchildren <laughs>